Hey, Kyle Wilson here. Welcome to the video. And in this channel, we talk about crypto NFTs and the metaverse. And in this one, we'll be talking about Bijutsu and the whole Naruto drama. And is it possible that Vivi is actually going to secure that license first before anybody else? Let's just go ahead and dive right into the video. All right, so first things first, you wanna make sure you get subscribed to my channel so you stay ahead of the crowd. I cover lots of NFT, branded NFT platforms like Vivi, and we even did a little video on Recur and many other platforms in the esports world. And uh, as the metaverse pops off, you know, we'll be covering a lot more other projects as well. If you didn't know, there was a company called Bijutsu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I am doing my best here who basically built this crazy, you know, insane Twitter following in a very short amount of time just by throwing the word Naruto in there and Boruto. And they were going to do some NFTs and collaborations with a few artists and things like that. And supposedly they secured the license on Naruto. Basically, in a long story short, it basically failed, right? There was a, it, it was a quote unquote rug, if you will, you know, not an actual traditional rug. They just got a lot of people excited and literally built this account up in a very short amount of time. And you even have the CEO here who basically said and addressed, you know, that basically they're shutting down, all right, until further notice, until they have more clarity on what's going on. So you can see here, you know, it, it's just showing here in this quick tweet that. Uh, the whole situation and you know that they're sorry and I will link this tweet or you can just go to his you know Twitter and read it for yourself it was actually a little thread here um, as you can see and further proof the other CEO or the other founder Sydney uh, K Taylor uh, it said that she got her account suspended uh, so that was very interesting to, to see that uh, yeah so uh, and one of the artists here says, due to my lack of experience in the sphere, I've partaken on a project which I thought was promising, but actually doesn't seem to be. After further digging, I noticed that the copyright contract was shown to all the artists and where it was received from does not seem to be legitimate to me. I should have done more research on this, but I was just excited to let on a big project or to be led on a big project. Huge apology for this. I'll be uh i'll take this loss as part of my learning experience be more careful to those who followed me for the project you're free to unfollow but yeah so this just keeps going on right and shout out to gammaverse for digging up all of this and you know all these tweets so shout out to gammaverse for finding all that and uh, but yeah i just wanted to cover it because i thought this was interesting and i thought the whole time that i thought it this whole thing was odd and i couldn't really find you know, as I was kind of doing research and trying to find like where their Discord server was and it just said coming soon. And, you know, it, it just seemed like it was too good to be true. And I was watching out like they're dropping, I believe, like, a, you know, they're I think they did drop their server like once or twice. And, you know, then they cut it off. And, and I don't know, the whole thing just seemed very sketchy and weird to me. And I think they're going to focus on doing like, you know, independent art for the most part. But uh, long story short, as you know, if you've been watching my channel, I've covered a lot of licensing type videos, especially when it comes to Vivi. Um, you know, if you've been following my channel from the beginning of the year, you know, you have a way better handle than 99% of the regular crowd in the NFT space just because of the licensing. Because uh, when it comes to licensing, Vivi is obviously one of the biggest projects that has cornered licensing when it comes to brands. Um, you know, and we've talked about it so much on this channel and how important it is to have the right licensing and the right contracts and agreements put together and that these brands, it takes a while. Like we've talked, we uh, sat in on a couple of AMAs with the co-founders and, you know, where they've talked about how, you know, how long it takes to work these things out when it comes to brands and ip especially like disney marvel and you can bet your bottom dollar that you know with a big brand like naruto there's going to be some complications there's going to be th some things that you have to work through you're not going to just get a license and then drop an nft like it just doesn't work like that um for these bigger brands like there's a lot of money involved and you're talking tens of millions of dollars in the short term and then obviously it could you know potential billions of dollars in the long term since there's royalties attached with nfts all right so it's a much bigger deal than people think and you know so you know i'm not too surprised to see this 
you know, DC at the beginning of the year, like I said, I talked about this quite a bit in the beginning because there's a lot of FUD in the VV community about the whole DC thing, but I called it from day one. I said that DC was talking about these independent artists that were going to the NFT space and trying to drop their, you know, DC themed art or actual DC, you know, characters and figures and superheroes without having that permission from the company. And DC addressed that. And a lot of people took it as like, it, you know, Vivi was in the wrong, but Vivi was in the right. Vivi had these licenses secured and they did it in the right way. But these independent artists are going about it the wrong way. They don't have permission um, to do these types of NFT drops and they don't have that commercial, you know, grade license, if you will. They just have that independent license to create those independent one off works. Right. So there's a big difference there. And like I said, I cover that with the whole VVDC issue. And so this doesn't surprise me at all. And this is why I kind of think that I, I was thinking from the very beginning that VV might have Naruto or could be in the works. And especially this right here with this situation happening, it makes me think VV actually has it already, or at least one of the other platforms might have Naruto when it comes to that. Because VV, like when it comes to users, we have to take a step back from the whole NFT, you know, mania and hype. When Facebook bought Instagram, they didn't buy Instagram because it was cool. It was, you know, had pictures and anything like that. It was due to their users. All right. The users on Instagram were very loyal, you know, taking pictures. It was a different demographic as well. But the user base was there, right? People were posting and on Instagram every single day tuning in. So what we're seeing on Vivi is the same effect. Like as this thing, you know, they developed their social media side of it, but people post on Twitter. So even though that, you know, even if the active users on the app itself using the social part is not as robust yet, people are going to Twitter all the time. I see it on my feed all day. People posting Vivi stuff on there all day. All right, that's very important to some of these brands like Naruto or other brands that could drop on Vivi is when they see this type of, you know, interaction, they see this type of engagement. It's a no brainer. All right. So for these brands to drop on a, like a random platform, you know, that's cool and all, and I definitely support that. Um, but, you know, it when you're in terms of making money, you want to go with platforms that already have a built in user base. And that's why I've been saying from day one, you know, it's it's not necessarily about it's it's about making money for some of these NFT brands or these uh, brands right in the NFT space, especially with the royals, royal, royalties attached. It's very important to understand that and understand the business side of it. All right. Now I get the whole, you know, you know, it's about these independent artists and, and all that good stuff. I, I get it. I support them. I actually have a bunch of independent artists, NFTs myself, so I get it. But you also have to understand the business side of it. Just to highlight this artist here as well, she actually deleted a couple of posts, but somebody was on Twitter kind of basically calling us out. It looks like they copied, you know, some of the art as well. So there's other further problems when it came to that as well. It looks like she kind of knocked off another artist you know, and didn't really give credit where credit was due. She's addressed it, said she was sorry, but uh, since then she's deleted those posts and those tweets. So we're unable to read them, but um, that's something to give you a heads up on. You know, she probably is an amazing artist. I think I've actually seen her art pop up on my feed several times from other people sharing it. But yeah, I thought that was another thing too, is like, you know, you just got to be careful in the NFT space and you don't want to ruin your reputation as an artist when you're doing stuff like that. So you just have to be careful. Now with Alcon, Alcon has actually already worked with Naruto and that brand, right? He's worked for Four Kids Entertainment. You can see here, he was a chairman and CEO. Now he's the head of licensing of VV Collectibles. And uh, Four Kids actually opened up Naruto to America. And as you can see here, if you Google Four Kids Naruto, you can see that they even had openings and at the end of the show or intro, it said Four Kids Entertainment, right? Or Four Kids. And so you can just Google that and just see that they had a history and that Alcon was the CEO of Four Kids. So that's why I see a strong correlation where Naruto could end up being uh, with all that being said. So uh, let me know what you guys think about it. Do you think uh, they, you know, it's going to come to Vivi and premium, you know, augmented reality? I think that would be pretty cool myself. And uh, Vivi is getting close to the whole Immutable X migration. 
So there will definitely be that uh, availability for interoperability for some of these brands. And uh, I think it's going to be a slow process, but as the NFT space continues to boom, uh, they're going to get more comfortable with it and we'll see, you know, more interoperability. But, uh, you know, when it comes to the experience, you're going to have to be on the VV app to, to see these things in augmented reality anyways. I think it's great for both, but uh, yeah, that's all I got for this video. Let me know what you guys think and uh, smash the like if you enjoyed the video, hit that sub and bell so you don't miss any more videos like this. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video at the blockchain. And as always, be like an NFT, be authentic, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.